So, can we please settle down? So we can start the Q&E with the Chief Justice. Do I need to make a, an initial statement, give an initial you statement? You want to? Okay. Yes, Chief. Here's the statement from the Chief Justice. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak uh, before you uh, only a few minutes after I have uh, taken my oath of office as Chief Justice of the Philippines. Uh, ako po ay nakikiusap lamang sa inyo lahat na unawain ninyong aking mga Pagkukulang dahil po unang-una, banggitin ko sa inyo, hindi ko po hinangad nung umpisa pa lamang na magiging punong mahistrado. I joined this uh, nomination process, selection process, only because I was the number three ranked in the Supreme Court and uh, I happened to also win the vote of the Judicial and Bar Council. Ngunit uh, gusto kong bigyang diin na ako po'y napakahaba na ang pinaninilbihan sa ating hudikatura. 32 years na po dahil uh, unang naging hukom ako noong Nobyembre uh, ng taon uh, 1986 pa kay President Cory. Lahat po ng aking nakasabayang na-appoint ay nagsiretiro na kasi ako po ang pinakabata noon sa mga naging regional trial court judge. At ngayon, after 32 years, ako na po ang nabigyan ng ganitong uh, mabigat na katungkulan na magiging uh, head ng judiciary. Uh, maraming tanong siguro na gagawin ninyo ay tungkol sa aking mga plano. Bigyan niyo po ako ng ilang araw pa upang buuin ang, ang mga plano na yan. Ngunit uh, nandito na sa aking kaisipan ang mga mabibigat na problema ng hudikatura at ito'y matagal ng gustong malutas ng ating uh, Supreme Court. I have been in the court uh, for... Uh, over nine years now, I joined the court uh, in April 2009 from the Court of Appeals. And in that time, I have joined the court in its many decisions, whether I was in the majority or in the minority. I also joined the court in its many programs and projects. And I am quite familiar with many of the problems that we have been trying to solve and which have not appeared to have been solved uh, up to now. So this uh, matter of uh, uh, achieving something and leaving a legacy, uh, well, of course, we'll, that, that will be foremost in my mind, but uh, let me give me more time to think about this. So with that uh, opening statement, I think Attorney Gleo will uh, open the floor for any questions that you may want me to answer. Thank you, Chief Justice. May I call on Mr. Dexter Ganibe from DCMM to ask his questions. Nay baga malam ma ako Chief Justice ang lao ka ng iti Ilocano. Yeah. Chief Justice um uh, sa unang uh, pinakaunang interview niyo po kanina binanggit niyo po yung uh, pagpapanatili ng uh, independence ng uh, Supreme Court uh, sa inyong uh, pamumuno at uh, ito ay uh, hindi nagpapa-influence Sa mahigit tatlong dekada niyo po sa judikatura, ano po yung mga naranasan po ninyong pang-i-influensya para mabahiran yung independence ng, uh, ng hudigatura? Alam mo, napakahirap na sagutin ng uh, satisfactorily yung sa tanong na yan. Kasi ang pagtingin sa isang bagay ay sa, from different points of view 
will give you different perspectives. Now, if your perspective of what is independent is to uh, is against the government or any uh, administration that uh, has uh, issues in our court at the time I am there, uh, let me assure you that I have always given these matters uh, analytical uh, in, uh, attention and deep study. So when the time comes for me to give a vote, if it is a collegial court, or to render a judgment when I was still in the trial court, I always did my best to come up with a fair and uh, legal and valid ruling. Now, maybe your concept, uh, as far as that question goes, your concept of judicial independence is that uh, government should all lose the case, should lose the case, I, do, I hate to disappoint you. The government is often uh, uh, better the arguments than the other side. You know, the government is uh, represented by the Solicitor General's office when it comes to issues raised uh, in the Court of Appeals, at least, or in the Supreme Court. And uh, there are also many cases where the government loses. And yet, you do not call that uh, independence. It's just that the government had less of the merits of the case than the other side. So, to answer that question with fairness, I will honestly tell you I cannot. Because that question is loaded against the government. <laughs> Most of the time, kasi, ang gobyerno magaling mag-argue. Now, you may probably think uh, about my voting record. My voting record... Well, it is there. Sometimes I join uh, uh, the decision against the government. Sometimes uh, I go in favor of the government. But in either time, uh, I am uh, doing it uh, with the best uh, lights that I was given by God. So, as far as the law is concerned, I was independent. My, sec My second question. Um, Mainit po yung usapin ngayon, Chief Justice, kaugnay dito sa panukala ng executive branch na particular si Pangulong Duterte na binabanggit niya ang paglikha ng death squad laban dito sa mga regulating grupo ng New People's Army. Sa tingin niyo po, sa ilalim ng alimang batas na umiiral sa ating bansa, ito po ba ay naayon? Ay hindi ko po pwedeng pangunahan ang uh, executive dyan dahil ito ay <laughs> masasagot lamang kung merong actual case. Hindi kami pwedeng magbigay ng kuro-kuro tungkol sa mga ganyang bagay. Well, I guess I will trust the government to do its job if it believes that there is a crime being committed and uh, that crime calls for a specific response, the government can respond. The laws are very clear about that. The Constitution is very definite about protection of every citizen's uh, rights to life and liberty. But, uh, you know, when we mention about this death squad, it's a matter of uh, perspective. Maybe there was uh, some encounter. Uh, we cannot be the judge of that because it is the people on the ground who made that judgment about the necessity for the measures taken. Okay. But, uh, if you believe that there is an excessive uh, use of violence or force by government agents, you can always run after them. But before that thing happens, I cannot make any statement because the courts are not allowed to rule on these issues based on uh, advice or opinion. Thank you, Dexter. May I now call on Mr. Mike Cavallo from DCMM to ask his question. Good afternoon. Congratulations, Mr. Chief Justice. Mike Navarro, abs -CPNs. Thank you. Sir, uh, most of the reactions to your appointment had something to do with the pronouncement of the President that he would appoint the most senior justice as the Chief uh, Justice. Of course, the interpretation might vary. Uh, some would say that it is Chief Justice, uh, or so it's acting Chief Justice Antonio Carpio was the most senior. On the other hand, uh, some would say that you are the most senior in the judiciary. How do you think the issue of uh, seniority uh, will affect uh, the Supreme Court in the next few months? Will it be a factor in the way that it had been in the past? 
You know, that question is very difficult to understand. Okay. I will not uh, tackle that part of, uh, about uh, who between me and any other aspirant for this position to which I have been already appointed uh, fared as far as uh, comparing experience is concerned. I just stand on my own uh, personal record. I think that uh, I have served the uh, longest in the judiciary. Uh, I leave that to the president to make a decision what he meant by uh, giving pre priority or preference to uh, seniority. I cannot uh, second guess the president. But uh, let us trust in his wisdom. Uh, if he appointed me, that should be the end of it. And I don't think that it will be fair to my uh, colleagues to make a judgment uh, in comparing them to me. Uh, I may lack more qualifications than they have, but uh, it's still up to the appointing power to exercise the discretion to choose among us who were properly nominated. Uh, as far as the effect of this in the coming months is concerned, I cannot discuss that yet because it is too speculative for me to do that. Pardon me for not uh, being responsive to that question. That's right, Mr. Chief Justice. One more question, sir. Um, how, what steps are you going to take in the coming months to uh, improve camaraderie within the Supreme Court? I understand that's one of the concerns that you've had uh, in the previous uh, Chief Justice. Not, not the Catholic, the Senate. Well, uh, if you have been long in the judiciary, you develop a certain judicial culture. And uh, the people I am now working with in the court are all uh, uh, gentlemen and uh, a lady, or there will now be two ladies, uh, a lady who have been around for a long time. I don't think we have uh, any problems about camaraderie. We are so close to each other that we uh, have uh, good times together despite our differences in uh, philosophy, in approaches, and uh, in learning. Uh, the public must uh, be assured that uh, we have restored collegiality. That is what you meant by that question. As far as camaraderie is concerned, we have no issue about that. We are all, uh, almost all of, of us are of the same age. Mm -hmm. There are only two who are wala pang sedula. Pero hindi po yan sa gabal sa aming pagsasama. pagsasama. Samahan namin ay napakaganda. Ma -ma Close kami sa isa't isa. At uh, kung makita lang ninyo kami kung paano kami mag-interact, kayo po'y magtataka kung bakit nagkaroon ng isyo ng mga nakaraang taon. Ganun lang ang aking sagot dyan. Thank you. Michael Bobby from ABL-CBN. He is a fellow lawyer. Oh. <laughs> May I now call on Mr. Benjamin Pulta from the PNB? Uh, sir, yes, I'm sir, congratulations. Congratulations on your appointment. Congratulations din sa pagka-award sa inyo mamaya ng Lucy. Oh, thank you. Sir, um, pakiluso din na ako, sir, nung uh, sinasabi niyo na usually, uh, in your opinion, the, the government lawyers are able to give better arguments than their uh, counterparts. Related to your question, sir, how would you want your administration be remembered in terms of its relationship with the executive, considering that this administration started on the wrong foot, siguro, with, with the head of the judiciary and, and, this, and so did the previous administration? Okay, that question uh, uh, seeks to determine if. Uh, what, what was your intention? In general, sir, you, you witnessed the, 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 the problems between the judiciary and the executive for the past administrations. Uh, and, uh, judicial no. uh, well, Benjamin, uh, wala kaming naging problema sa mga administrasyon. Okay. okay. Kami po ay nandyan lamang, we are the permanent uh, uh, institution. Whether uh, a new president comes in or not is irrelevant to us. But uh, if what you are driving at is the working relations between uh, our court and the other departments of government, I can assure you that we have been uh, working hand in hand with uh, the three, two other branches of government. You know, the dynamics of this uh, three department system 
is such that uh, the Congress dictates our, uh, holds our purse, the executive enforces our laws, but it is the Supreme Court that ultimately declares what the law is at any given time. And uh, the separation of powers doctrine is precisely uh, going to ensure that these three branches of government, even if they have seemingly conflicting uh, uh, powers or uh, overlapping boundaries, are really parts of one whole. And that is what the Supreme Court has been doing in relation to the two other branches. Now, we may have at times nullified certain laws that Congress enacted and the President has approved, but that does not mean that we are uh, in conflict with them. We have uh, made them understand through our decisions that there may be a need to look at things differently. And that is when they will come up with a new law, forgetting about the old that we have discarded. That is the way dynamics of this three department uh, system in uh, our constitutional setup works. So there is really no conflict, even if we appear to be uh, disputing or conflicting with them. But uh, if only one or two of us uh, makes a public declaration in the decisions that are written or dissents that are written, that's not going to speak for the Supreme Court. Thank you for that. Sir, um, one question. You already answered it, sir, in the opening statement. But I'll just try to say, I've already read it. Yung, sir, about uh, the short time that you will be as Chief Justice till next year, up off the top of your head, what's the problem that you want to solve immediately or you know, start rolling towards its solution during your term? Yeah, thank you for that question. You know, uh, people in the lower ranks of the government, judges and uh, the rank and file, may have misperceived at times what is happening in the upper levels. But uh, that perception, uh, may, we may have to dispel that perception very soon. And I think that is the foremost job that I am going to undertake uh, in the coming months. Now, you call 11 months short, but I don't think so. It will be 11 work field months for me. And uh, what I intend to do, therefore, is to look at this problem of perception uh, by reaching out to our people in the field and to the judges who work the, uh, in the particular stations. Another thing that uh, we have to attend to is to uh, and remove this. There is also another, this is also based on another misconception that the Supreme Court does not care about the lower courts. We do care about the lower courts, but uh, maybe in different degrees uh, we may have uh, faltered in that desire to make them believe that we are really concerned for them. That is also one thing that I would like to correct. Now, people in the bureaucracy also tend to be complacent uh, when they are not often uh, told to do their jobs better or uh, good. Okay, That's also another thing that I would like to uh, address. These uh, people who work in the public service must always be mindful of their obligation to the people and uh, they should never fee, uh, represent themselves as uh, uh, owners of the office. So that is another thing that I would like to address. As far as quality of our uh, delivery of justice is concerned, I think the Supreme Court has been uh, attending to this uh, year in and year out. There has been no faltering in this uh, area. And uh, all we needed to do is to strengthen the uh, matters that are already in place in order to address these uh, weaknesses. I will uh, have more to say, but uh, right now, uh, I feel that that is enough to respond to your question. Thank you, Benji. Uh, may I now call on Mr. Angel Adimario from CNN Philippines. Hi, Chief. Good afternoon, Bo. Congratulations on your appointment. Thank you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm just curious, uh, will you also defend justices or judges uh, in the event 
um, President Duterte comes up with another list of those involved in the drug trade or, or have uh, involvement in the illegal drugs. So how will you address that scenario? Well, uh, based on our uh, experience, as soon as the President uh, came up with this drug list and we found that there were judges uh, whose names were there, we immediately launched an investigation. We cannot be defensive about that because uh, if they were really involved in drugs, they were violating the law. So the Supreme Court immediately felt that uh, it was not up to us to defend these uh, judges, but we had to assure them that they must uh, be made accountable for this uh, based on evidence. That is what we did. And uh, I think uh, in some uh, areas we were able to check misbehavior by judges who were thought to be favoring uh, certain uh, criminal quarters as far as the drug uh, problem is concerned. The Supreme Court is always alert and vigilant in the protection of the rights of judges and uh, the employees of the judiciary because we are also at the head of this uh, judicial system. And we will not allow our judges to be intimidated if there was no basis at all for accusing them of uh, these uh, drug uh, connections. Okay. Now, other than that, I cannot uh, give you a definite answer about how we will react because it will be on a case-to-case -case basis. Because there are some that uh, operate on uh, reputation. We do not do that. We do not do that. We have to follow the evidence. Do you have another question, Andrew? Okay. So he doesn't want to use the second question. Oh, okay. I um, may now call on Mr. Dano Pinkinko from GMA7. Hi, Dano Pinkinko. GMA7. Chief Justice, uh, congratulations. Point. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chief, I'd just like to, uh, I guess, go back to, uh, to, to how you uh, found out uh, about your appointment as, uh, as the, our new Chief Justice because you said earlier in your message that you did not expect for this to happen. You did not want this. Uh, it wasn't your hope. But paano po ninyo nalaman una? And have you met the President personally to uh, uh, siguro if not, if not the past few days before, and kumusta po ang inyong relationship with the President? Magandang tanong yan. Yan, people will probably wonder why I was the choice of the President. And uh, many will probably not believe that I do not know the President. Honestly, I do not know him at all. He does not know me also. The only time that I had ever been personally close to the President, meaning within a few feet away from each other, was when I attended the uh, oath-taking ceremony in Malacanang of uh, Chief Justice uh, De Castro. That was the only time so far that uh, uh, I so met the President and saw him very uh, at close range. And uh, it was even for a very brief moment uh, that uh, that happened because the President was a very big had a very busy schedule on that uh, evening when we were there. And uh, the president uh, never even, uh, the president and I never even had any conversation. Okay, how did I come to know about my appointment? The only time I came to know about this appointment is that uh, it's last night, was last night. Suddenly, yung text ko, dating nang dating na. Napudpud na nga yung aking daliri. Mabuti na lang ay eh, isang daliri lang ang ginamit ko, kundi pudpud na yung lima. Okay, what was there in the message? Well, that I have been appointed. Eh, my, my uniform response was, sana totoo. Sana totoo. Those of you who received my responses will probably agree that that was the response, or more or less, the, of the tenor. Because the expectation was that... Uh, not knowing the president at all and not having worked hard for this uh, nomination, I would be the least expected to be 
chosen by Him. Believe it or not, that was what happened. And uh, I do not even know any of the family members of the President. That's uh, honestly, I, I can tell you that without batting an eyelash. And I come from the North, the President comes from the South. Very, very wide opposites. Uh, during the campaign uh, for elections of the president, I preferred another candidate. <laughs> I don't know if voting, uh, voting record <laughs> will matter in that, my, in that way. So that is how I would answer your question. I hope that satisfies you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, I'll use the second question. <laughs> um, kanina po, uh, one thi uh, in your opening statement, a couple of things struck me uh, with, with what you said. Uh, sabi niyo po kanina, uh, ako'y nakikiusap sa inyong lahat. To, to quote you, Chief, uh, ako'y nakikiusap sa inyong lahat. Unawain ninyo ang aking mga pagkukulang. And also, uh, meron din kayong binanggit na mga problema ng kudikatura. I am curious to find out ano po yung binabanggit uh, sa inyong pagsasabi ng inyong mga pagkukulang at mga problema sa kudikatura bukod po dun sa nabanggit ninyo kanina. You know, when I said that, I was only trying to be humble. Ayokong magumpisa ng isang mayabang na Chief Justice upang uh, pan, uh, to make you believe in me. No, I will not. I know my limitations and that is why I started out with that kind of apologetic uh, uh, discourse or the uh, statement. But really, it is uh, good to be humble so that the expectations will not be too high. And uh, if expectations were to be the basis of judging the performance of an, a public official like the Chief Justice, I hope that that will not happen to me. because. Uh, if I raise the bar of expectations too high, I will really fall short of it, given only 11 months. Now, understand this, the judiciary has many problems. People uh, know about them, and uh, it is my purpose that during that 11-month period that I will be at the helm, I will try to find out about these problems and try to address them in the best way the Supreme Court can. It's not the Chief Justice that will uh, solve these problems, it's the Supreme Court. That is how the Supreme Court works. I will only be a primus under inter pares. Thank you, Daniel. And now may I call on the last person in the list, Ms. Leon Buan of Rappler to ask her questions. Um, Chief Justice, congratulations po. Uh, Chief, uh, we would just like to know your judicial philosophy, kung mas judicial activism po ba kayo or judicial restraint, meaning how, to what extent would you extend your deference for the executive and their discretion? Well, uh, sometimes uh, I have problems understanding judicial restraint and judicial activism. It's uh, a very, uh, it's, those are terms that are involved, okay. There are uh, theoretical uh, philosophies regarding judicial activism and also ju judicial uh, uh, restraint. I think if you were to ask me to characterize my uh, approach, I am more on the side of restraint. I am more on the side of restraint. Why? Because I happen to believe that uh, the three branches should work together and the three branches should respect each other's boundaries. You're referring, of course, to the big ticket issues regarding national government, governing uh, the people. We are not talking about private concerns or private controversies. So, I wanted also to see myself as a judicial activist in some respect. Maybe that can be in the area of environment or uh, in human rights. So, that uh, question really traverses a lot of uh, areas. But as far as uh, issues regarding government action is concerned, if there is a presumption in favor of government action, presumption of validity in favor of executive uh, action and legislative action, then I am on the side of judicial restraint. But if it concerns uh, environment and uh, 
rights that would affect impact on the people's lives, I will go for judicial activism. Uh, I think uh, that is the best I can give you as an answer right now. Sir, babalikan ko lang ulit yung um, seniority bilang isa sa mga time-honored tradition here in the Supreme Court and the appointment of Chief Justice De Castro was said to have restored the stability of the Supreme Court. Do you think, Chief, your appointment will preserve that stability for the rest of your term? Well, uh, I am very confident, although I have, uh, you may not have the time to determine that. You have only 11 months to find out if my colleagues love me or not. But the honeymoon does not need to happen over a long period because I have been with my colleagues for over nine, nine years now. Most of my colleagues right now are new to the bench, to the high bench, and uh, I can uh, uh, look at Justice Carbio, Justice Peralta, Justice Del Castillo, uh, Justice uh, Bernabe, as uh, colleagues who have been with me for longer than five years, I think, five years. Justice Leon and also, I count him there. Though the rest uh, have been around in the court only for four years, maybe, or uh, shorter. So, that will uh, give you the idea of, uh, it, is, will, it is not difficult for me to win them over to my side. They love me, and I think I love them also. So the camaraderie that we are looking for there may be based on that chemistry of staying together, having worked together for such a long time. Now let me give you this idea of how the Supreme Court uh, actually does its work. The physical setup of the Supreme Court, uh, the deliberations uh, in the bank, is uh, based on uh, the session, uh, the deliberation room, a large room, I don't know if you have any, seen it. Uh, and it is there where we make uh, these the, this discussions, debate these issues very passionately, and at times very, uh, uh, well, you know, it can get heated. Uh, but that is done in the morning, right after the deliberations, whether heated or not, whether uh, involved or not, there is a time for us to sit down together and break bread, which is just the room closest to the uh, deliberation room. That is when we take the lunch. Now, yung napipikon, hindi na pupunta ron. Pero karamihan, pumupunta lahat doon. And there we banter. We do not anymore think about our differences. We banter, we dissipate the differences, we break down the walls that have divided us only moments ago. Okay, that is how this camaraderie is being preserved in the Supreme Court. And then there is work that is other than deciding, that is other than arguing. There is work, more work, that we do in, at other times of our uh, stay in the Supreme Court. We do committee work, we go visit, we do speeches, we, but no one teaches, no one teaches, except uh, when we are called upon by the Philippine Judicial Academy to give our uh, share of uh, time for teaching uh, fellow judges to make them better. So there is no problem with me uh, being uh, accepted by my colleagues and uh, me accepting them. Wala naman akong uh, uh, history na nakaaway tungkol sa bagay na ito. Thank you, Coach Justice. Okay, that ends our Q&A with the Chief Justice. We thank the Chief Justice for taking time out to meet the media, and I don't think this will be the last uh, meeting between the media and the Chief Justice. Uh, will the Chief Justice care to give any closing words or parting shots to the media? Uh, ganito po ang aking uh, uh, sumagi sa aking isipan this uh, morning uh, when I was told that the appointment papers have been signed and uh, the messenger who would bring it to the Supreme Court is on his way. I want to yan, his or her way to the court. Uh, what immediately occurred in my mind is that uh, this is something that only God may have destined me to have or to 
exercise a power like this. But this is not really a power that I have to own. This is a power that I will share with uh, many others, the, 15, the 14 other members of the court. So when you have a problem with any court or even the Supreme Court, just feel free to ask us. It's best to understand if there is really a problem or not. Because sometimes our perceptions may be confused or may be uh, deceived by things that we learn not from the horse's mouth, through the horse's mouth. So I ask all of you, nakikiusap po ako sa inyo, meron kaming PIO, at uh, doon kayo dumulog at dadalin sa pansin namin ang mga concerns na yan. Media is a very important uh, segment of our social lives. Uh, huwag kayong patatalo sa ibang segment kasi kayo po ang uh, molders of opinion and you sometimes sway the public's uh, perception regarding things that actually happen. So use this power very carefully and very uh, uh, round. Your point of view should be broad enough to make you question whether this is true or not before you peddle it as a report, okay? I do not uh, like to tell you how to do your jobs. You know your jobs better, how to do your jobs better than I do. But uh, as I have been also a victim of uh, media irresponsibility at times, at times, hindi lahat ng panahon, I would like to ask you to be fair to all the subjects of your reports. I'm not going to gag you. No, that's not my purpose. Uh, the Supreme Court will never gag anyone because it is too conscious of uh, political and civil rights. You just go to the PIO, represented by capable people, who know how to bring these concerns to our attention. And if we could solve these issues before you print them, so much the better. But before you print them, make sure that these are the things that really happen. This land that you will give will not become that dangerous to us. Thank you all for uh, giving me your uh, time this afternoon. And I hope that uh, in the 11 months to come, I will be uh, having this same opportunity to interact with you. Thank you all.